states from Tennessee, so crossing state lines clearly would be another issue that would involve the FBI. Well, certainly, they'll be looking into where you live in Tennessee or who, you know, various neighbors or family members that may be still in another state such as Tennessee. So that's, that's one issue. Uh, the issue of bomb squad capability will be another issue to uh, examine that vehicle and then, of course, conduct the search of the apartment. And the apartment's going to require evacuating the area, evacuating other places, and then going in and doing uh, the search that's required there. Here's what we know about that. We're told uh, by reports not long ago that the street, the, we believe to be the street where the shooter lived, again described as a 24-year-old male, had been blocked off, that they're surrounded by uh, law enforcement in SWAT attire, uh, mostly watching, according to one description, ambulances and fire trucks also nearby, but, but everybody was being kept at, at quite a distance. Uh, unclear exactly if it was connected, this location, to the shooter, but police had said earlier that they were evacuating the building and that the shooter himself had mentioned something about explosives in his apartment. Uh, police say uh, also mentioned uh, something about weapons in his car. Uh, they uh, told us that they uh, evacuated that building and that they were continuing to monitor the situation, although at the early on they believe that the, uh, the shooter acted alone. Uh, Tom, thanks for, for being with us. going to ask you to stick with us all morning, if you will. I want to read you a statement from President Obama. He has uh, released this statement from the White House. Saying, Michelle and I are shocked and saddened by the horrific and tragic shooting in Colorado. Federal and local law enforcement are still responding, and my administration will do everything that we can to support the people of Aurora in this extraordinarily difficult time. We're committed to bringing whoever was responsible to justice, ensuring the safety of our people, and caring for those who have been wounded, as we do when confronted by moments of darkness and challenge. We must now come together as one American family. All of us must have the people of Aurora in our thoughts and prayers as they confront the loss of family, friends, and neighbors. And we must stand together with them in the challenging hours and days to come. That is a statement from President Obama talking about what has happened in Aurora, Colorado this morning. And again, we want to update you. 14 people reported dead in this shooting. The number could go higher, though, because 50 people have been reported to be transported, uh, injured to area hospitals, in some cases very critically injured. All of this happening at a theater, which was showing the dark night in many of the individual theaters, 16 theaters in that complex. Some people People saying they actually thought it was movie special effects and didn't realize until people started standing up uh, with injuries and bleeding that in fact that uh, there had been uh, gunshots and people were being injured. John Berman is monitoring what's happening on Twitter uh, to see obviously one of the first reports John we got in fact was on Twitter where a young woman said that uh, that there had been a shooting. Uh, you know you, you mentioned uh, the young people who've been flocking to the, this, these theaters across the country to see The Dark Knight Rise is one of the most anticipated films of the summer and certainly never expecting anything like this. I want to read you some tweets from someone named Zach Eastman. Uh, he wrote Everyone dressing up as Batman. I'm going dressed as Bruce Wayne, albeit a short, stubby, unsexy Bruce Wayne. This obviously before the shooting happened. Then his very next tweet is this. Have just evacuated our theater in Aurora. There was a shooting in our auditorium. I'm safe. It just gives you a sense of the mindset of what people must have been thinking uh, as they went into this theater uh, last night. So it had... Um, uh, again, young people, we know victims in, in their teens, in their 20s, in their 30s, even some young kids uh, as young as six. All right, John, thanks for that update. We've been uh, listening to witnesses who've been filling us in what they've seen, some of them inside the theater, Theater 9, where the shooting was taking place, some of them outside the theater, which the gas, uh, what seemed to be uh, uh, tear gas, uh, and other gunshots actually coming through the, the walls, and they uh, experienced it as well. So we want to play for you a little bit of what some of those witnesses, those eyewitnesses and people there uh, were saying this morning. She said that a man uh, about six feet tall, taller than her, uh, kicked through the door, and he was in, a, a, like she said, a riot helmet. Um, she said he was in, had a bulletproof vest on. Uh, you know, she said that he was completely covered in all black with goggles. And he, she said that um, after that point, when she saw that he was holding a shotgun, they, her and her boyfriend dropped to the floor and just kind of started to crawl to see if they could get away. Um, they got up and they started to run through the emergency exit. Um, she said that when she turned around, 
all she saw was the guy slowly making his way up the stairs and just firing people, just picking random people. It appears that there was some sort of uh, smoke or gas. Um, we, we're hearing reports of an explosion. We don't know if that was part of the smoke and gas or a separate device. Uh, I, I have heard that he was wearing a vest, uh, as well as we did recover uh, at least one rifle, a handgun, and I believe there was another gun of some sort inside the theater that was left. As they were leaving, he witnessed a baby, an infant, get shot. But yeah, they said gas bombs um, as they were leaving, and then just gunshots all over the place. And it started in the theater that I had bought tickets to. So it was, it was kind of a mind blow. While I was here waiting to talk to the doctor, I, I heard the call come in at the nurse's station. From what I could see, there are people unconscious, people bleeding. I saw one bed go past, a poor guy had blood caked all over his face. He um, just was not responsive at all. Same thing with the lady. They're just all out of it. Uh, by the time I left, I overheard the nurses saying they've managed to get most everyone stabilized, which is a blessing. It really is. He did not resist. He did not put up a fight. I don't know if the exact details of the officers surprised him or how it actually happened, but I know some of the first officers that you know arrived within, I don't know if it was seconds, maximum a couple minutes. Uh, found him behind the theater at his car and took him into custody there. So that is a little description from some of the eyewitnesses of what they saw inside that theater, which is really a, a theater complex, 16 theaters, many of them showing the Dark Knight Rising, uh, which of course uh, was, was packed because this has been a, a film that people have been anxiously awaiting. Here's what we know about the shooter. His name has not been released by authorities at this point, but he's described as 24 years old. He's also described as wearing a bulletproof vest and being heavily armed. He was taken into custody, we're told, in the rear parking lot of the theater, although some, some might witnesses uh, said in fact they, they thought that he was captured uh, in the theater itself uh, the police say they took a shotgun and a rifle from him they were able to recover another gun inside the theater and he was according to some witnesses wearing goggles uh, police confirmed that he had a gas mask as well uh, they have not confirmed the goggles part police say he did not put up a fight uh, there was no resistance and additionally he was able to tell them about explosives in his apartment building uh, police said that at a, a press conference and after that they mobilized uh, units to his apartment building and there is a building that uh, we've been monitoring that appears could be his uh, where there's now been surrounded and uh, surrounded by, by law enforcement and ambulances as well uh, it does not believe no one believes that there was a second shooter although in their early morning press conference police said that that was something that they would continue to actively monitor uh, 50 people were transported to area hospitals with injuries some of those injuries very grave I want to get to nicole williams she's joining us by phone from swedish medical center she's an assistant vice president there nicole thanks for your time appreciate it tell me what's happening at your medical center right now yeah. right now we uh, have actually just received word that we are receiving a fourth patient so currently we have a 19 year old male who has been listed in fair condition we have a 20-year-old male who is in critical, a 29-year-old female in critical, and we understand we have a 19-year-old female inbound. We are unclear for condition at this time. So you have two in critical condition. You have one 19-year-old uh, one who seems that, that that person is in better condition, and you're unclear of the person who's being transported to you at this time. Correct. Can you give me any details on those who are reported in critical condition? What kind of injuries do they have? Um, the three that we received uh, immediately following the incident all came in with uh, gunshot wounds. Uh, we're hearing rumors that the patient that's currently on their way in could have some shrapnel wounds. Um, but again, I don't believe they've arrived yet. So we have not uh, been able to assess the wounds or the condition. Have you seen shrapnel wounds in any of the other patients? Earlier, we heard uh, an eyewitness who was uh, talking about um, uh, sort of a, a, a shrapnel bomb, so something had exploded, and after that, that was the only person who mentioned that, and now you're mentioning potentially shrapnel again. I'm wondering if you have any, seen any other injuries with any patients with some kind of shrapnel. Uh, we have not. Uh, basically, I'm sitting in the command center here at the hospital and staying out of the medical 
uh, responders that are in the emergency department triaging these patients. So we're, we're basing our information on the updates that they put up on the screen. So uh, we've had very generic and general descriptions such as gunshot wounds and now uh, the EMS, I think, advised us that it could be shrapnel wounds. So um, it, the extent of the injuries at this point are unclear other than just the conditions that we've currently listed the patients in. Uh, how is the, the scene where you are? Are you finding that there are family members who have come down to try to check on their loved ones? Is it is it chaotic? Is it calm? Um, we do have a handful of family members that have reported to the hospital as well as some friends uh, that were at the theater with people that got injured. Uh, we have a couple of people here uh, waiting for a friend who's in surgery and they were sitting next to that person um, uh, when everything happened and, and they were shot. So. Uh, right now, the people that we have here at Swedish Medical Center are relatively calm, um, just kind of awaiting information. Uh, we do have several people calling from all over the country uh, that are hearing the breaking news this morning and looking to track down their loved ones. So we are collaborating with all of the other hospitals who have taken victims from this, uh, and all of the hospitals are compiling lists of all of the names of patients who have been admitted, and we're working as diligently as possible um, also to protect the privacy and safety of patients who may have been admitted to try to work with family members who are calling, trying to track down their loved ones. Right. Uh, Nicole, thanks for that update for us. We certainly appreciate it. And I should mention, Nicole mentioned uh, that a potential shrapnel wound could be en route uh, to that hospital right now. Earlier, I was listening to an eyewitness who talked uh, about not only the smoke grenade or the tear gas, that, uh, as I think has been uh, now confirmed, and, and something like 15 to 20 shots fired, but also something about a scrap metal pepper bomb which would be consistent with what is being now described uh, as an injury that is incoming to that hospital. That's the first time that we've heard uh, of that. Christine, you've been monitoring the other hospitals That's in addition right. to Swedish. And we know that University Hospital has the youngest uh, victim so far, a three-month-old. The youngest victim that we can tell so far is just three months old, a little baby. Um, the Denver Post saying that um, there are 20 victims there overall. We've got that from our own reporting as well. Nine of them are in critical condition. That baby, though, uh, is alive. It, and, and I can tell you that CBS and, um, and also one of the local affiliates there are reporting that the child is in fair condition. That child is what we're going to work to confirm that. But three months old, you can imagine going to a midnight movie with a three month old, probably a sleeping baby. You're trying to go out and, and, and see this very, this film that quite frankly, was sold out over the past few days. Uh, a three-month-old child at that, at, that, um, at that movie, that film, was the, uh, the youngest victim that we've noticed so far. Oh, my goodness, yeah. And then that, some of those descriptions have been that all these theaters were absolutely packed with uh, moviegoers uh, and, uh, and making this tragedy all, all the more, more awful. Uh, Mitt Romney has released a statement. Uh, he says this, Anne and I are deeply saddened by the news of the senseless violence that took the lives of 15 people in Colorado and injured dozens more. We are praying for the families and loved ones of the victims during this time of deep shock and immense grief. We expect that the person responsible for this terrible crime will be quickly brought to justice. He mentions 15 people. The number that we have is 14 people who have been killed, 10 who died inside the theater, four others who were reported uh, dead on arrival or at the hospitals, the area hospitals where they had been transported. Uh, 50 people were reported uh, injured, in some cases gravely, gravely injured, described as, quote, very critically injured. And we're watching to see uh, if that number stays at 14 or uh, it could go higher. It happened, of course, at the Century 16 Theater in Aurora, Colorado, uh, where they were showing The Dark Night Rising, uh, which, of course, were showing in many theaters uh, in that 16 theater complex. We want to check in with our Denver affiliate, that's KCNC. Going to listen to them and dip into their coverage for a moment. Here, early this morning, another four people died after the shooting, either on the way to or at emergency rooms in the metro area. Here at University Hospital, 20 patients were treated, nine are still in critical condition. Uh, the youngest victim, a three-month-old child, uh, doctors say that that infant is right now doing fine. We also understand that there is another victim, a six-year-old victim, that was taken over to Children's Hospital, which is just the next hospital over. We are still trying to understand more about how badly these uh, 
these victims were injured and as we understand the next 12 hours will be very important hours for the at least nine victims that we understand are in critical condition here at University Hospital. Back to you. For sure Stan, wow, thank you very much. They already had a full ER going, two ER docs there at the time when this triage started. Let's take another live look. from That's our affiliate KCNC. We've been uh, reporting on and covering their coverage, dipping into their coverage at times. Uh, we are uh, going to check in now with Tony Roman. He's a security and investigations expert. Uh, so, Tony, what you know and what you've heard uh, about this shooter, um, he is 24 years old, uh, according to 